Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. God is so good. It's such a blessing and a privilege to come on live once again this week to discuss God's word. I just want you to know that this word is very enriching to our spirits and it's life changing. The more we get into God's word and allow the word to get inside of us, the word manifests and produces life in the midst of us. God is able to do what he promised to do in our lives to set us free. If we desire to be free, he who the Son has set free is free indeed. So you've got to have a desire to want to be free, and God will do just that in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise his holy name. So we're going to open up in a word of prayer. I'm excited about what God is doing in our lives as we receive his word, allow the word to be transforming to our minds and our hearts. God bless you, cousin. God bless you. So thank you for joining us tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come in for your awesome presence to tell you thank you, Lord, for another blessed day you have created. We thank you, Lord God, for the breath of life that you empower us by your spirit to live in the fullness of who you are. We give you glory, give you honor, we give you praise, oh God, because you brought us a mighty long way through the day, through the business of the day, the trials and tests and tribulations we encountered. We thank you, Lord God, that you're faithful to keep us from stumbling in the pathway of darkness and walk in the light of truth. Tonight, God, remove the busyness of the day from our minds, our hearts, that we would focus on your word, that you would be glorified, that you would fill us with your presence, God, fill us with your word, that we can eat from the table of life and find our liberty in your presence, God, that you would be glorified and exalted. Father, we thank you that we have a victory in Christ Jesus. We bind every demonic force, every spectating spirit, every attack of the enemy come against us because of his word. And release the blood of Jesus to cleanse our minds and our heart and set us free and cover and protect us from every attack of the enemy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God is so good. His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Last week we began our discussion in the book, chapter 1 of the bait of Satan, living free from deadly trap of offense. And we talked about um, me being offended, me being offended. And that's, that's taking a personal look at ourselves to see what is it is in our heart that causes us to become offensive to other people or even to ourselves. And that we allow the Spirit of God to manifest inside of us to keep us steadfast in the faith of Jesus Christ. And a lot of times it's the way people speak to us. Someone may have done something to you. They may have uh, looked at you wrong, and you became offended. And a lot of times, we become offensive to God when we rebel against his word. We live in darkness and not in the light of truth. We straddle the fence. We try to fulfill the fleshly desires and godly desires, which we call to become lukewarm. And one thing about that in Revelations, it talks about that in chapter 3, that God would, would, would spew you out of his mouth. If you lukewarm, he said he's going to spit you out. So you got to make a decision. As Joshua told the children of Israel, as God gave him instruction, choose you this day whom you will serve, either God of Israel or the God of the Amorites. So you have to make a decision in yourself, who am I going to serve? Am I going to serve the God who created all things, who live inside of me by the Holy Spirit? Or am I going to walk in a pathway of darkness continue to straddle the fence, continue to call myself a child of God, and knowing within myself I'm separated from God. You cannot be separated from God to walk in the power of God. You got to come to a place in yourself, allow the Spirit of God to bring conviction to your heart, to change your mindset, to change your attitude, to change your behavior. Until the mindset is changed, our behavior is going to continue to be conducive to the appetites of the flesh. So whatever the flesh desires to do, that's contrary to the word of God. God said the mind of the flesh is an enemy of God. It's hostile towards God. But the life of the spirit, the mind of the spirit, the life of the spirit is life and peace. 
So in order to live in the fullness of who God is in our lives, we have to be submissive to his lordship and his authority and allow this presence of God to begin to cover our hearts and our minds by the Holy Spirit to change us from the inside out. I made a statement last week, garbage in, garbage out. If all you feed yourself is the garbage of the world and allow other people to feed you garbage, you become a dumping ground. And that's offensive to God because God created us for his glory to worship and praise his holy name. But if I continue to become a dumping ground, I'm becoming blinded and obscured from the light of truth. So I can't see God for who he is because I allow so much garbage to fill my house. I remember a long time ago, I met a young lady who used to go to church with us. And um, this lady loved God. She was always a worshiper of God. So she had me take her home one day. When I took her home, I was appalled. I said, oh my God, how can you call yourself a child of God and you get all this garbage in your house? You have to step over garbage to get to the kitchen. When you get to the kitchen, step over garbage to get to the sink. And I'm like, how can we be children of God and live in this type of lifestyle? That's uncleanliness because your mindset is unclean. Your behavior on the response to your mindset. Whatever your mindset is conducive to follow after is what your behavior and lifestyle is going to pattern. You know, one thing I heard T.D. Jake say something on one of the messages today. He said that, um, that the reason why the enemy attacks us in our minds so much, because he know in our spirits is where things begin to materialize to manifest God's glory in our life. So in our spirits, we don't guard our hearts, as the word tells us, for out of it flows the issues of life. So everything that entails your life is connected to the spirit realm. So when I tap into the spirit realm, my mind has to be in the, in the kingdom mentality to understand godly principles to apply it to my life. If I don't tap into the spirit, I'm going to continue to walk on the surface of the things of God and never go into the deep wells of the knowledge and the wisdom and understanding of who God is to me. So I always miss the mark because I'm not studying God's word. That's why it's so important to be a steward of the word of God. It's very vital to your Christian health, your spiritual health, your spiritual lifestyle to study God's word, to get the word inside of you. Because once the word is in you, it gets in your mindset. It changes your thought life. It changes your actions. It causes you to respond differently to God and to people of the world. One thing about um, being a man of God, where I live at, a lot of people, they look up to me here in this building where I live at. And they're always giving me, me some type of prompt because of the way I dress, or the things I say, the life I live, because they know that I'm always going to be available if they need me to pray for them. And many times people come to me, like I said on Sunday, some will come to me like Nicodemus later on at night or, or when other people are not around, they seek my attention to share their problems that they are going through so I can intercede and pray for them. And I thought about Jesus, because Jesus... He was still away into the garden to pray. He was still away into a secret place to spend time in the presence of God. And when the time came for the minister to people, he built up his spiritual muscles where he was available to sinners and Republicans. And the people murmured and complained and talked about him. Folk going to talk about you just because of who you are. They're going to be offensive to you just because of the way you dress. Because they can't do what you do or, or live the way you live, they become jealous and become offensive. And God says tonight, there is a deceptive trap that the enemy sets before us that we have to be careful and aware of that if I'm not paying attention, I'll stumble off the pathway into a bait. Any bait that Satan sets before you is obscured where you can't see it because he knows it's enticing to the flesh. So if I follow the dictates of the flesh, I won't see the traps that set before me. But the opposite of that thing 
if I walk in the spirit, if I walk in the spirit, <coughs> excuse me, the Holy Spirit will warn me that there is some danger set before you. Certain people are assigned to attack you. Certain places are designed to entrap you. And God will show you exactly what it is if you pay attention in the spirit. So deadly, deceptive traps, they're deadly traps. I call them deadly traps. Because the enemy, now he sets, sets uh, deceptive traps, he sets deadly traps before you. Because he wants to kill the Holy Spirit inside of you from in controlling your life. If the enemy can dry up the Holy Spirit power, his passion, his desire, his fire inside of you, guess what he does? He pulls you into a trap to bait you with the things that are going to cause you to have, have a, a desire from something you see that you're going to want so bad. Just like a person commits adultery. It doesn't happen overnight. Adultery doesn't happen overnight. It's planned. Because when the enemy sets someone before you that you know is not your wife or your husband, he sets them before you to be very enticing. They bait you with kind words, sexual gestures, different things to captivate your mindset. And the enemy does the same thing with the worldly things. He captivates your mindset with things that appear to be good and look good for you. But all the time, it's a bait to destroy you. The Greek word for offend in Luke chapter 17, verse 1, comes from the word scandalon. That's where you get the word scandalous. You have the scandalous folks in this world. Wicked folks, evil folk, nasty folk. This word originally refers to part of the trap to which the bait was attached. Hence, the, the word signifies laying a trap in someone's way. In the New Testament, it often describes as an entrapment used by the enemy. So offense is something that's attached to the bait. So whatever it is that's trying to draw your attention, there's an offense at the end of that thing attached to it. And it talks about in the New Testament, it often describes the entrapment used by the enemy. Offense is a tool of the devil to bring people into captivity. You need to write that down. If you're taking notes, you need to write that down on, on your notes. Offense is the tool of the devil to bring people into captivity. Imprisonment. Lose your, your control. He knows if I can get you entrapped, I can keep you from walking in your purpose. The enemy wants you to get out of character. When folks say things that violate you, that, don't, that you don't like what they say, the way, way they mistreat you, he wants you to become offensive when you retaliate and respond to negativity. I was thinking about this one day, how when you meet people in the street and you speak to people, they frown at you. You speak to some people, they look at you as, and, and say, why are you looking at me? Why? Because they're separated from the Spirit of God and they're walking in darkness. So when your heart is filthy and you're walking in the path of darkness, your response is negativity. You hang around negative people, that same spirit that's inside of them gets on side of you. It gets in you and you find yourself becoming negative. You may be feeling good and excited when God has done some things in your life and you got a testimony to share and you just want to tell everybody about it. Until you meet one certain individual who comes along, you share your testimony, and they look at you and say, well, God ain't did it for me. Who makes you a super Christian? And all of a sudden you get offended. The same joy and excitement you once had now been dampered with offense. <coughs> And God wants us to be aware of the enemy. Paul told Timothy in chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 to 26. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 to 26. says, a servant must not quarrel, that means fight, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. 
if God perhaps will grant them repentance so they will know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare or the entrapment of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. So Paul urges Timothy, who's a young preacher, telling him to teach my people, teach God's people, not to quarrel. Don't become so easily offended. Walk in humility. Have a teachable heart. Pray that those who are offended come to repentance because they're entrapped by the snares of the enemy. So he's saying whatever it is that got you entrapped in your heart, you need to pray for repentance. That God can cleanse your mind in your heart and set you free. It's a dangerous position to be in when you become offended because some people cannot handle offense very well. Some people, when they're offended, they're evil, they're malicious, they're plotting and planning for your demise. In the church house, you got folks get offended. I don't like what the message was about. I don't like the way brother or sister looked at me in the church. I don't like the way they greeted me in the church. I don't like this. I don't like that. Jesus said this. It's going to come. There's no way to escape offenses. In, in St. Luke chapter 17, this is our key verse. Verse 1. St. Luke chapter 17, verse 1. Then said he to his disciples, it is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. Are you carrying offense? Are you the one that's causing offense to somebody else? He said, beware of where offenses come from. Because he says it's impossible to avoid offenses in this life. So as a child of God, you're going to be offended. But your response needs to be that of the Holy Spirit and not of the flesh. Those who are in quarrels or opposition fall into a trap. And I held prisoners to do the devil's will. Those who are in quarrels, who's always ready to fight, always got a negative attitude, always angry, always bitter, always looking for wrong in somebody else and can't see the wrong in themselves. He says those type of people are, in, are always held prisoner to do Satan's will. Even more alarming, they are unaware of their captivity. That's deep. People who core fall into the trap of the enemy are unaware that they're held in captivity to the enemy. The children of Israel, many times in the wilderness, when God brought them out of Egypt, God gave them stern instructions and commandments to follow. And every time they broke his commandments, they led themselves into captivity. What's holding you bound tonight? What is it that got you in prison? Tonight, God wants to set you free. You have to get to the place in yourself to identify what is it that got me as a prisoner to Satan and allow the Holy Spirit to come into your heart and purge that thing out of you. I guarantee when you recognize what it is and you live before the Lord, the Lord himself will justify you. The Lord himself will acquit you. The Lord himself will receive you gracefully through grace and mercy. When you come with a repentable heart, they do not realize that they are spewing out bitter waters rather than pure. They do not realize they're spewing out bitter water rather than pure water. In Hebrews chapter 10, in one of the scriptures there, it talks about, about the water. It talks about being cleansed by the water of the word. And also reference coming clean from an evil conscience. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. It says, let us draw near with a true heart full of assurance. That means confidence, boldness. 
of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, that bitter water, being cleansed from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let's talk about the spirit man being washed with pure water. And then he goes on and says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promise. What did God promise? God promised us that we come here with the true hearts will be cleansed with clean water. Then he says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. So I need to provoke you to follow love. I need to provoke you to follow the will of God, his commandments. And when you walk in truth and righteousness, the enemy has no power to control you and hold you in prison because you're allowing the spirit of love to flood your heart. Amen? When a person is deceived, he believes he is right even though he is not. When a person is deceived, have you ever met somebody who was deceiving themselves and you know they're deceiving themselves? They thought they were right in their wrongdoings and the more you try to tell them about themselves, they got mad and became aggressive, ready to fight, stubborn, rebellious. They deceive themselves so much, just like a liar. A liar become a professional, a professionist in lying because they lie so much, they believe their own lie. And it says, even though they're not right in their eyes, they think they're right. We have to get to the place in ourselves where we allow the Holy Spirit to reveal our hearts to ourselves that we know what's inside of our hearts that needs to come out of our hearts and not of God. And when you allow the Spirit of God to come into your heart, the Holy Spirit purifies, He sanctifies, He cleanses, He sets you free from the inside out. So when people see you, I remember when I was young in ministry, even today, people still do it. Be walking down the street or going to the grocery store or wherever I'm at. Someone will come up to me and say, hey, you look different. Why are you so happy? Something about you is different. Which gives me the opportunity to engage in conversation. To tell them the reason why I'm different. To tell them the reason why I got this joy in my heart. Because God has did, did something in my life that changed my life. If I've been through cancer and God delivered me, it's a testimony. If you've been through any type of major illness and the devil thought he had you, God delivered you, that's a testimony. So because of your goodness, of your testimony that God has given you, you can tell somebody to help change their life. No matter what the scenario is, we can divide all offended people into two major categories. Those who have been treated unjustly or those who believe they have been treated unjustly. So it's two categories. People who've been treated unjustly and those who think they've been treat, mistreated unjustly. And you have to recognize that this is the enemy trap because he works on your mind to deceive you, to make you think that what you're doing is the right thing to do. So even though you have not been mistreated unjustly, he'll make you feel like you've been mistreated unjustly. Have you been around certain people and you feel a joy and excitement and you come around a negative person, all of a sudden you start feeling sad in your heart? You know, feeling like, man, what's going on? Why am I feeling like this? I'm starting to feel sick or I'm getting a headache or this is starting to manifest in my life because of the spirit in the atmosphere of the enemy. And God says, put on the full armor of God that you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So if I put on God's armor every day before I leave my house, no matter where I go, no matter who comes around me, that's an agent of the enemy, it will not affect me. I'm a living witness. I be around people all the time, cussing and slandering, drinking and thugging and all this stuff. They come around me and they be so negative and foul because I'm covered in the blood of Jesus, the full armor of God, their attitude doesn't affect me. I begin to speak God's word 
which affects them to make them leave me alone. One thing I found out about God's word, God's word has the power to either silence the mouth of the enemy or cause them to flee away from you. Every time you get confidence, the word says, let us draw near with true hearts full of assurance of faith, with confidence and boldness, assurance of who you are. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. So when you come around people who are not following Christ and you know they're not, you have the power to speak God's word to silence the mouth of the enemy. Glory to God. I don't know why this is glitching tonight. Excuse the glitch. When you go back to watch this video on my YouTube channel, it doesn't glitch at all. It plays normally. I played one from last week on today, and it, it plays very well. So excuse the glitch right now. We're almost done, but um, the enemy is alarmed, and we rebuke this spirit in the airways right now that's causing this video to keep glitching. And we declare and decree we have free access in the airways to proclaim God's word. Amen. So when you stand on God's word with confidence and assurance of who you are, you can silence the mouth of the enemy when you speak God's word. Many times I found this to be effective. The word says, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Will stir up anger. So when people come around me and they're slandering, they're cussing one another and saying all kinds of stuff around me, I don't engage in a conversation. I listen. And then when I speak, I speak the word of God in a calm tone. And before you know it, the crowd dispersed, which reminds me of the story of the woman who was caught in adultery in John chapter 8. See, John chapter 8. When you read that chapter, you find this, this encounter. The woman caught in adultery. This is the same woman named Mary Magdalene who washed Jesus' feet with her tears and dried it with her hair. This is the same woman who they brought before Jesus with a point of bringing accusation to get her stoned to death. Because according to the judicial law, if you were committing adultery, you were to be taken before the town people and brought to justice before the town people and they stoned you to death if it's found out to be true. So they brought this woman to Jesus talking about offense, right? We're talking about offense. So they were offended because this woman was a cause of adultery. And according to the law, she didn't even put to death. So they come to Jesus, say, Jesus, this woman was caught in adultery. What do you say we should do to her? Jesus listened, and he bent down on the ground, began to write. And when he stood up, he said, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Right? You know the story. So right after that, he bent down, began to write on the ground again. And when he stood up again, all her accusers left her. So Jesus said, woman, where are your accusers? And he said, well, they're all gone. So therefore go and sin no more. A lot of times when people come to you with accusations, what is your response going to be? Are you going to be silent like Jesus did? Are you going to try to defend yourself with your words, with your own mindset, your own actions to plead your case before people who are accusing you? Or you're going to speak the word of God. I found out the most effective way to deal with a devil that comes against me is speaking the word of God. Just like Jesus in the wilderness, when Satan came to test and try him, Jesus spoke the word and he fled from him. So you got to get to the place in yourself, study the word, know the word, meditate on the word, and allow the word to get in your spirit. Hallelujah. People in the second category believe with all their hearts that they have been wronged. Often their conclusions are drawn from inaccurate information. So we talk about two categories, those who felt like they've been treated wrong and been done wrong, and then those who believe they've been done wrong and have not been done wrong. So the second category are the people who believe in their hearts they have been wrong because of false information. So if you're not paying attention, and that's why I learned to listen 
He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the church. Be quick to hear and slow to speak, the Word tells us. So if I learn how to listen intently from the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will give you instruction on how to deal with your enemy every time. So all the information is accurate, but the conclusion is distorted. It might be the right information, but you twist it up, now it became offensive. I may have done something to someone to hurt them. And someone else takes it because they didn't tell someone else about it. They misconstrued the information of how the offense happened in their lives. So then they come back with mixed up information. Now other people are mad at me. Why? Because I spread the wrong information to somebody else about something that didn't happen the way they, that I said it happened. So we have to be careful when we become offended by people and listen, learn to listen. Because I found out something. If a person is lying about you, you listen intently, you find out the truth that come out every time about themselves. Be quick to hear, slow to speak. Either way, they hurt, their understanding is darkened, and they're judged by assumptions, appearances, or hearsay. So a person who becomes offended is a person who's been hurt, a person who has been in, in a place of receiving false information, and now they become judgmental because of hearsay or something they've seen happen in their lives or the lives of somebody else. So we got to get to the place in ourselves where we continue to lift up one another. We need each other in the body of Christ. Every joint supplies, the word says. So if one part of the body is suffering, we all suffer. Jesus says, when he had Paul to write in, in the book of Romans, in one of the chapters, he says we are to bear one another's burdens. So fulfill the law of Christ. If you don't bear one another's burdens and you slandering one another, you're making yourself just as guilty as the other party. So you got to get to the place in yourself where you hear the voice of the Spirit of God speaking to you and you walk in the truth of God's word. Because if you don't walk in truth, you'll fall after a lie. And that's what the enemy does all the time. He keeps us in place of entrapment in ourselves where we don't realize what's going on. So walk in the truth of God's word, stand on the word, allow the word to marinate in your heart to bring you to the place we recognize that the enemy is deceiving me, he's trying to manipulate me, he's trying to hurt me, and he's trying to bait me and entrap me to turn away from my conviction in Christ Jesus. So when you walk in truth, the truth will set you free. In Galatians, this is correction, it's Galatians chapter 6. Verse 2, Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. It says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. In the Amplify, it puts it this way. Bear, endure, carry one another's burdens, and troublesome moral faults. And in this way, fulfill and observe perfectly the law of Christ, the Messiah, the complete and complete what is lacking in your obedience to do it. So if I'm walking in the, in the obedience of God's word, helping my brother and my sister who may be stumbling, may be weak in their faith, may have fallen off the wayside, and me being a child of God, know this individual, God is putting you in accountable to go to those people that you know to help lift them up to help bear their burdens, be with them in their troubles until they're strong enough to come out on them all to stand on Christ's word. And the more you do that, you fulfill the law of Christ. So we're going to end at this point tonight. We're going to pick up tomorrow with the true, the heart's true condition. I mean, next week, the heart's true condition. We're going to talk about it next Tuesday. But I pray this is helping somebody. I'm, I'm glad to see many of you have joined in tonight. And I tell you, this word is empowering 
if you really pay attention and allow the Spirit of God to minister to your heart, it's going to set you free in your inner man. Because so many people in the body of Christ, they are, they're baited by Satan and have fallen into his traps and can't seem to rise above it. That's why you have people still dealing with drug addictions, still dealing with, um, with all other habits that's not of God because they haven't got the power in themselves to come out of it. And it's very important for you and I to begin to intercede in behalf of one another that we will be able to lift them up out of their pit of despair to bring them to the truth of God's word. Because it's the word that's going to set them free. We need each other. We need to encourage one another. Hold on to one another. Help each other rise to the purpose and the calling of God in our lives. And I tell you, when you do, you're going to find yourself being enriched in your spirit for doing the great work of the kingdom. Because kingdom business is not an easy business. It takes work. To stay in that word, stay consecrated. It takes time to study, to know God's word for yourself, apply it to your heart in order to be effective in anybody else's life, to pull them from the bait of Satan. You got to study the word of God and get that word in your heart. In 2 Corinthians, I mean, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I'm going to read this one scripture. It says, verse 20, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 20. But now they are many members, but yet one body. If you read this passage of scripture, it's talking about the diversity of gifts, and it's talking about the body of Christ, how God placed different gifts in the body of Christ, and how each gift supplies to the body. And if one part of the body is lacking, it's the responsibility of all the other components to get in the place and get in their place to help heal that broken part of the body. And when you do that, you bring restoration, you bring deliverance, you bring victory, you bring wholeness back to the body. It's very important because we are a part of God's body and he's coming back for a bride with a spot of wrinkle. He's coming back for a remnant who people are people who have not compromised, who have not given in to the things of the world, who have not sold their souls to the devil, but made a decisive decision to live wholeheartedly for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, for your word tonight. I pray that this word merit in our hearts, continually changes from the inside out to become more submissive to your will and your heart's desire. Whatever it is, God, in our hearts that we know about, secret sins, hidden sins, that we try to overlook, that we buried in our hearts in a secret treasure chest, that you expose it, God. Bring it out. That we'll be set free from the inside out and you will get the glory. We ask that you, God, tonight, cleanse our minds and cleanse our hearts from all sin and unrighteousness, and fill us the Holy Spirit, O oh God, to walk in truth and righteousness from this day forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah to the Lord God Almighty. I tell you, this is so good. God is doing a great work. Great work through these lessons. And I tell you, this word is enriching. It's enriching to my spirit. I'm loving it. Because the more I teach it, the more I'm learning about myself how to live more devoted and live in God's righteousness. I see quite a few people on tonight. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Jarrell, God bless you, my brother. Timothy, my friend from college, I mean from high school. God bless you, my brother. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, Pastor Terry. Thank you for joining tonight. Sonia, God bless you. Deacon Cannon. I tell you, God is so good. God is so good. If you got any questions, any questions, feel free to write me your questions or inbox me. And I will answer your question accordingly if God give me uh, revelation, understanding. Webster, God bless you, brother. Because we, we need to continue to grow in grace and knowledge who God is. 
And the way we're going to grow is by continually studying God's word. If it's something we don't know, we need to ask somebody that may know God's word to give me understanding that I can get an interpretation for myself how to apply this word to my heart. And it's very important to get an understanding, all they get and get understanding from the word of God, because God's word will give you wisdom. It will give you enlightenment. It will change your life forever. Amen. So I want you to do me a favor. Pray this simple prayer with me tonight. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for giving me another chance. Forgive me for my sins, knowingly and unknowingly. Wash me in the blood of the Lamb. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that simple prayer and you were a backslider, or you are a sinner, never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The angels in heaven are rejoicing over one sinner that came to Christ Jesus tonight. And I pray that you continue to grow in your purpose and the destiny that God has for you to fulfill in your life. Did you pursue it by faith and stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made you free? Until next week, God bless you. Again, thank everyone for tuning in. And spread this, this video with someone else. Share it with somebody else. If you find it encouraging to you, encourage somebody else with the same, same um, video tonight. And I thank you again. May you have a blessed rest of your week and a powerful time in the presence of the Lord. When you begin to get into your secret closet and pray, continue to lift me up as well. Because I need your prayers too. We all need to pray for one another. And I tell you, the prayer of a righteous man avail this much and that's the gospel truth all right god bless you all have a great night